Hey, it's BT with the BT Moto GP Mazano review. Let's get right to it. Um, tell you what, that was some great racing. Uh, I'm gonna start off right now with my grades. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grade. I'm gonna grade the overall racing in Mazano. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna give it an A minus. Let's give it an A minus. A minus. A plus. A minus. A minus. A minus. I thought it was great racing, man. Let me tell you something. Nobody races harder on their home races than the Italians. I mean, when the, we know you, when the races go to Europe, uh, you know, the Spaniards, when they go to Spain, when the Jerez is the first race, and they go to Aragon and, and Barcelona, yeah, 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 the Spaniards there. But, man, the Italians come out in full force. Anybody feel that? Like, they're more more aggressive. Like, the Italians, I love the Italians. I really do. They're, they're just more aggressive. When they go home, and they show out at home, as, as my mom would say, they show their ass. But when they do a home race, they come out to to play. And they, they really do. I, and so I give the props to the Italian, the Italian fans represent. Let's get right to it. Moto3, oh my gosh, how could you not have a tear in your eye watching uh, Tatsu Suzuki win that race? I mean, seriously, man, if you if you didn't feel if you didn't feel it in the feels, if you didn't feel it in the feels right, right in your gut, man, you are dead inside. I mean, that was. Man, to watch uh, Mr. Simoncelli just, uh, I, first of all, props to him for even still racing. Everything, you know, everybody knows what happened, but still, it's just, wow. And to watch uh, Suzuki do what he did, because he either, he either been it or win it. And that, that, that's his, it's not really his philosophy, but that's just how he is. He's a great racer. When he finishes, he's in the top five. He's a great racer, but he hardly even finishes. But this race, I mean, you just kind of felt it. Did, did anybody feel that? You just kind of felt that was going to be his race. That was a great race. Congrats to him and the whole team. Tessa Suzuki, man, my hat's off to you. Great race. Let's go to Moto2. Moto2, uh, Augusta Fernandez. Let me tell you something about this dude. He's in, the, he's in the hunt for the championship. And here's what I like about him. His upside is bigger than Marquez's upside because Augusta Fernandez, if you remember, he was on the uh, the, doc, uh, the Diaz or one of those press, uh, the, uh, the pre-race presser. I don't, I don't know which one it was, but he was with Marquez. And uh, remember Marquez was like, um, I had to look and say, who's this Augusto Fernandez? By him saying that, it doesn't mean much. But when you're always say, okay, he's up with the big boys, okay? But nobody knew who he was. He, I, he had to come a whole different way. And because even Marquez didn't know who he was, and nobody really knew who he was until probably this year or a little bit last year, he has a chip on your shoulder, and he wants to prove that he's supposed to be there. Even though he is there, he's got to prove it. So it's like Tom Brady, if you, if, uh, in my European fans, if you know Tom Brady, American football player, he was a fifth-round draft pick, and now he's the greatest quarterback ever played. He's going to have a little Tom Brady in him. He's going to always feel like he's not good enough, or they didn't select him to be with the best. So he's got to constantly prove himself. And I think that's going to play in his hands because Augusta Fernandez is almost like a Marquez in a sense of, man, he wasn't afraid of putting that bike right up in uh, Fabio D.G. Antonio. And D.G. Antonio is a great uh, great rider. His his stock is continually rising. Every year in Moto3, he got better. He was just too big for the bike. And now, Moto2, you watch. This time next year, he should be in the hunt for the title. And I think about, two, I think three, give him three years, and he goes to MotoGP. He, he's going to be one of those guys who gets better with age. He's going to be like a fine wine. He's going to get better with age. But Augusto Fernandez wasn't afraid of getting dirty, man. That guy, and he wasn't, he wasn't dirty. That block pass was wicked. What he did, that was wicked. Augusto Fernandez, watch that guy. Because I like his upside better than Marquez. And it's, when Marquez won, it's kind of like Anna Car uh, Carrasco when she would win. She took off from the front. They couldn't catch her, and she went. That's great. Don't get me wrong. You got to, you know, uh, to win it, you got to fit. To win first, you get first, you got to finish. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, the fact that Marquez doesn't really get dirty. When he wins, he wins, but he doesn't really like bang bars or or gets like get get gully with it, as I like to say. Where Augusto Fernandez, man, do you guys remember in or Silverstone, he and Brad Bender, those guys, I, I think their upside for MotoGP is going to be better. They're not afraid of the, the you know, elbow and it's all over. They it's kind of like a boxer. They throw like kind of dirty shots, uh, you know, low blows. When it's all over, they're like, and that's what those two guys are like. I like Augusta Fernandez. Watch. If Marquez doesn't um, get a couple more victories, you watch Augusta Fernandez, man, toward the end of the year. Those guys going into the going into the uh, the flyaways, the Moto 2 title is not over by any means. I think it's going to be great. Watch Augusta Fernandez. Um, let's move on to Moto GP. Moto GP. I love Fabio 
is this close? Everybody's pulling for him. And the thing about that is, you know, his team is like trying to get money because next year they want a factory bike. They want it with factory specs and everything. And I'm like, he's doing this without factory specs. His bike was, remember the beginning of the year, his bike was lower on horsepower than all the Yamahas. Uh, uh, Morbidelli had more. And he's doing more with less. He's doing more with less. He said, like, if he was a woman, he became a woman you marry. Like, wow, baby, you made a dinner and everything out of ramen noodles and, 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 a, and a carrot. I love you. And that's what he's doing. He's doing more with less. He's, he's been in the top three in every race for a while more than any of those guys. And Maverick, God bless Maverick. I don't, I mean, the memes are funny. And I, I love Maverick. I really do. I have a special place in my heart for Maverick. Especially if you watched b before the race, how when the guys were coming out of the trailer, you know, like Rossi had this big, <sighs> Marquez had a little bit of people, which is saying something in Italy. But, you know, but, but Maverick didn't really have anybody. And it's like Maverick is what we call him. He's, he's a Maverick. Maverick's a Maverick. And he's in his own little world. And I rooted for Maverick, but he said he almost lost the front a couple times. So that's why in the middle of the race, he was nowhere to be seen toward the end. He cut, he cut the, the, the advantage at like 1.3. It's like Maverick. Oh, if Maverick could just, I don't know what, he, I mean, it's hard to say when you're on a bike ride. But man, I know, I mean, I'm grand. If you're going to a, a corner 140 miles an hour and you're not feeling that front, uh, far be it for me to say, man, what you need to do is you need to gut it out. And he'd be like, uh, who are you, old black dude? So, um... I wish Maverick would, just, I don't know what it takes, but if he would just stay close, he could win these two races. Silverstone and this race. He was in, he could have won this race, or at least got second. So I like to see Maverick do better, but you got to give it to Fabio. Even Marquez said that uh, the race really belonged to Fabio. And what I'm going to say here is that if Rossi wouldn't have tugged on Superman's cape, if Rossi wouldn't have came and kicked the sleeping tiger, because even, even Marquez said it was a little bit hard to find motivation and what, and what happened in, 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 in Q2. Marquez is like, oh, so you want to play, huh? That's what we do when he turned into, he turned into Rambo. He really did. He goes, okay, that's what you want to do? You want to fight? Let's fight. And that's what he did. Rossi kicked the sleeping tiger, and Marquez is on top of his game. How top of, the game, how top of his game is he? 120 races last week. I mean, and Silverstone, 120 races. You got pole 60 times out of 120 races. Now he's fourth all time in victories. And you made him mad. I mean, and it's hard to say this because Rossi, you know, we've all always counted Rossi out, you know, at, at many times in his career. And he's come back making him look like fools, which I'm glad. But this time seems a little different. And I say that and he still finished fourth the last two weeks. But it's like he didn't have the pace. And it's like it just hurts. And Marquez makes them all look like fools. The, the Ducatis were nowhere to be seen. I mean, it, what Marquez is doing is unbelievable. You got to give this guy credit. And like I said, uh, with uh, with the qualifying and 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 Marquez threw shade on Rossi a lot. He goes, yeah, I don't really want to, uh, uh, you know, like I hope he gets sanctioned because he's not really in the run for the championship. And just little the little digs, it's like little cheap shots. It's kind of ugly, but in a way, in a way, I understand both of them because I, I don't go to 2015. If we go through that, it's gonna be a whole another can of worms. Anyway, uh, the race, I think I said, I thought the racing was A plus. A minus. I give it A minus. A minus. I mean, the the Moto Two was definitely the. I think that was the best race of the whole uh, of all three classes. Moto Two was a great race, but Moto Three. What is so frustrating is, and this is why I don't think those guys should move up until they're ready. Is that Lorenzo De La Porta? He had his foot on Aaron Kinnett's neck, ready to give the the last blow, the the death blow, and he didn't capitalize on it. Aaron Kinnett, and that wasn't his fault at all. But uh, De La Porta, what a champion does is when he's at the precipice on breaking free and winning the championship, that's when you give the death blow. That's when they're like, <gasps> and you give it one of those kind of mm, like on TV, and they go. Is it stabbing him like, which is kind of, that's kind of say sadistic, you know? You're already dying anyway. He tells you to be quiet, like, and that's what Lorenzo De La Porta had, and he didn't capitalize on it. Now, um, Kinnett is still only 22 points out. He didn't finish the race. He's only 22 points out. And Tony Arbolino, Tiger Tony's only 30 points out. It, it, De Porte, even though he's moving up to Moto Two, which I think I think he did another year in Moto uh, Moto Three. I really think another year. And also, because look what happened to uh, Basecki. Marco Basecki almost won a championship last year. Now he's in Moto Two. And he's almost in a witness relocation program. Like where's he at? So 
I just think that when you when you have the champion down, when you have somebody down, and you and you have a chance to deliver that death blow, deliver that death blow, and he hadn't done it, and he still allows Aaron Connect to still uh, be in it, along with uh, our Blino. So, Moto Three is still um, still great racing. Um, let me see. Um, and uh, so I was do Rider of the Races. Rider of the Race for Moto Three, Tatsu Suzuki. I mean, come on now. I do have to explain why he's Rider of the Race. Great race by him. Uh, the heartbreak goes to Aaron Connect. I don't know what he did before the race. I don't know if he walked under a ladder and then, like, going to the course, a black cat jumped out in front of him. Then he dropped the mirror. I mean, I don't know. I feel so bad for that kid. Um, but we'll see. He'll bounce back. He's the champion. Uh, Moto, uh, Moto 2. Moto 2. I'm going to say the ride of the race was Augusto Fernandez. Wow. That dude did what he had to do. Block past his ass off. The heartbreak had to be Fabio DJ Antonio. He did everything he could to win. And he was a victim of just a, an aggressive rider who wanted it more. Plain and simple. MotoGP. Ride of the, I'm going to say ride of the race. And the heartbreak is Fabio um, Fabio Quartararo. The first. That's the first. The ride of the race and the heartbreak is Fabio uh, Quartararo. Fabio made the only mistake he made. And I think Marquez, why am I, why am I yelling? I think Marquez brake checked him personally. I think Marquez brake checked him. And then, um, and that caused him to make that mistake. I can't prove it, but if he had a, if he had a, a, a brake light on his bike, I guarantee he would have showed that he brake checked him. Anyway, great race in A minus. Tell me what you guys think. I'm putting this together because I just, I, anyway, long story short, I finally got a chance to watch the races. Uh, I was traveling all day, didn't get a chance to watch. So, great racing, man. I love GP. Anyway, um, on the Aragon for next week, I, I think Marquez wraps this up. He wraps this up before um, uh, Thailand. Hey, it's done. I have nothing else to say. The guy's on another planet. Next year, it's going to be Fabio, I think. And I think uh, Maverick. But for, the, for now, it's Marquez World. We're just living in it. I'm BT saying thanks for listening, guys. Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what I missed. And until then, hey.